everyone, this is Arlene. I'm one of the newest design team members for Lindy Stamp Gang, and that um, website is www.lindystampgang.com. I've been using Lindy's products probably for a good maybe six, seven, eight months now, and I am just so excited uh, to be part of the design team. And uh, their products are just awesome, and uh, those of you who've been following my channel for quite some time um, have probably seen some of my videos using the product. But I wanted to go ahead and use this time on this video to show you how to create a vintage flower using both the Starburst Stain um, as well as the Magical Micas. And I'll tell you a little bit about the products as well. And this is the vintage flower that I created. If you guys can see that, it's really pretty. I really love browns and um, that would go perfectly on a layout or a mini album. Or, or a tag, you can put it on a tag. It's really pretty. But I created the flower just going through some of the supplies. Um, like I mentioned, we're going to be using Starburst Stains, Magical Micas. I have these daisy flowers that I picked up from IamRoses.com. And then these are from IamRoses.com as well. I'm gonna be using this, but I'm only gonna be using the bud in the center of the flower. And then Many of us have these, and these are the skeleton leaves from I Am Roses as well. I'm going to show you how you can alter these um, ivory skeleton leaves. Okay, and then you will also need a thin paintbrush, and you're going to be using it to do some petal curling. And you will need an aqua pen to do some of the coloring on the petals. And you'll also need a pair of tweezers, and this is just to hold the petals down as you color them and heat set them. Now, uh, and then the aqua pens just to go a little bit over the product you can pick these up at lindystampgang.com and they come in a three pack and they come with different size tips so they have a wide tip brush you can see that there they have a wide tip and then they have a smaller tip right here so blue is uh, the the thicker brush tip the red is the thinner brush tip and we're going to be using the green which is the medium brush tip and this is what that looks like now with the Magical Micas, when you purchase them from lindystampgang.com, they come in a pack of five. And the cool thing about the packs are the color combinations match the color combination or sets that they have uh, the Starburst stains in. So for example, this particular set right here is the Holiday Moon, and there's a Starburst stain set uh, that matches this. Um, magical mica set and what the cool thing is about that is for, say for example you're making a tag or a mini album page and you use your starburst stains on the base of the tag or the page you can color up your flowers with the mica magical micas with coordinating colors so it's really cool um, it's a really great product and the good thing about the magical micas is it already has a fixative built into it so when you use your aqua pen to apply it there's no further um, addition of products that you need like like gum arabic or anything of that sort because there's already that that um, fixative in there so that's the magical micas micas and the aqua pens so let me go ahead and get started and show you how i made this vintage flower and um and we're going to be using three different magical micas i'm going to be using mission bells brown cattail copper and cocoa bean okay so I'm going to go ahead and start off with the Mission Bells Brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a petal and I'm going to take my aqua pen. And I'm going to work directly on my craft mat. You can do this on like a glossy surface um, that would work out fine, but you don't want to do the mixing and stuff on um, a, a rough surface or like on paper, for example, because it'll just soak in. But what you want to do is you want to get the water running on your pen. And I like to keep a paper towel on the side. Okay, so you can see the water come through the pen. Okay, you want to make sure there's a good amount of water in there. And that when you, then what you want to do is you just want to dip it directly into the mica powder. And you'll see that it'll pick up some of the powders. Now, a lot of people like to do mixing in the caps, but I like to keep things a little neat when I store my mica powders or my magical mica. So I'll do this directly on the craft mat. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squeeze my aqua pen until a puddle shows up on my craft sheet. And I'm just going to kind of mix and squeeze, mix and squeeze. And then I'm going to let go because I don't want any more water to get in there. And then I'm just going to mix it up. So right now we're mixing up the powder 
the Magical Mica Powder with the water. And I just want to make sure that all of the little chunks are gone. Okay, so we're good there. Now I'm going to take my tweezers just to hold my petal down or my flower and then I'm just going to paint. Okay, and I really love this because the color just pops like right away. And let me hold it up so you guys can see what I'm talking about. You guys see that? It's got so much glitter. I love it. And um, it's a two-tone color, so you'll see the brown color, and then you'll see a bit of gold pop through, which is really cool. Now, I'm all out, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my, my aqua pen again in the mica, Magical Mica um, container, and then I'm going to squeeze some water again. And I did a lot this time, so... And you just play around with the with the consistency, or the... Yeah, the consistency to get the right to achieve the color that you're looking for. Okay, you don't want you don't want it too watered down, but then you don't want it too thick either. Okay, so just sort of play around with it until you get that consistency that that's right for you. So once you're done, I'm just gonna cover that up. Once you're done, you can just wash off the excess, or you can use it on something else. Um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take my heat gun. And I'm going to go ahead and heat set the flower. Okay, once you're done heat setting it, you're going to go ahead and take the end of your small paintbrush. So you're going to use this end, and you're going to take each petal, and you're just going to curl and then push down on it and just kind of roll it a little bit there. And what that's going to do, it's going to give your petal a little bit of dimension, okay? And I'm gonna do that for all of the petals. Okay, there you go. So once you have all of your petals curled up, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of push onto your petals so it forms this little cup, okay? Kind of like that. Okay, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold it. Okay, do you see that, how, like, how it's like a little cup? You're going to hold it on top until, until well, once you got the cup formed, you're going to hold it on top, and then you're going to squeeze. And kind of squeeze, pinch one way, turn it, and kind of pinch it again. And what you're doing is you're creating that dimension so that the petals press up versus wanting to just lay flat. Okay. And we're going to play around with it some more before we actually adhere the, the flower together. But you're basically going to get something that looks like that. Okay? So that part's done. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to do the same exact thing to the other two petals. Now what I'm going to do, um, as you can see, it's still curly and it's, you know, I squeezed it so it's got that dimension to it. I'm going to put a dot of my glossy accents in the center and I'm just going to put my top piece and just kind of push it in there. And then again, I'm going to squeeze because I want it to be adhered together. Okay. And it's going to take some time for that to um, to dry. It's not going to dry right away, um, but it doesn't take very long. And then the base piece, I'm just going to go ahead and put some glossy accents on there. It's kind of like the Tim Holtz grunge flower for those of you who have played around with making those. And then with the bottom piece, I'm just going to kind of squeeze it also and kind of push down a little bit on the top piece, but not so hard because you don't want to crush your petals. Okay. 
and then just kind of work through it so you find out where the center is. And I think I see the center on here. There. Okay. And again, you know, flowers aren't perfect, you guys, so don't think you have to get it exactly, you know, layered where the leaves are, you know, mixed up or whatever. Um, because it's a daisy, so the leaves are going to be sort of like all over the place. Okay, now what I did is I took the rose bud that I got from I Am Flowers, and this is what it looks like, or I Am Roses, I'm sorry. And then what I did is I just peeled back, I know this is so bad because these flowers are just so gorgeous, but I don't have brown buds, and that's what I need for this particular um, and I Am Roses actually does sell the little buds, by the way, but the ones that I got um, are pink. So I just peel it back like that, as you can see, and then I just take the bud off, okay? And then what I did is I took my inker, my Tim Holtz inker, and I dabbed it with, or brushed it with the vintage photo. And that's just to kind of color in some of the lighter um, color of the petals that stick onto the bud. Okay, so here's my little bud. And then what I do is I just put, again, another little dollop of glossy accents in the center and push in my little rosebud. And there you have it, guys. That's the flower. Now, with the skeleton leaves, I'm going to color in two of them. So now I'm going to use the Ponderosa Pine Olive Starburst Stains. And these are the ones that come with the dauber tops. Okay, and you can buy the spray tops at Lindy Stamp Gang as well, and you can actually use these as a spray also. Use the stains as a spray, and vice versa with your Moonshadow Mist. You can also um, purchase the dauber tops from Lindy Stamp Gang, and you can use them as um, daubers. Okay, and then all you do is just push until it starts coming out. Okay, and then you just color up the leaves. And it doesn't take that much, because these are stains, you guys, so you don't have to use a lot. It looks like I'm using a lot, but I'm pushing very lightly, so um, the color that came out with the first dab is pretty much on the, on the dauber top. Okay, now what you need to do is you're gonna pick it up, and I'm gonna set it on this paper towel. And then you just fold it in a little bit here. And you, what you're basically doing is you're just taking off the excess from the skeleton leaves. Skeleton leaves, um, you guys, are very delicate, so you don't want to use your heat gun on them because they're just going to curl right up and burn. So, um, And the really, really cool thing about using these stains on the skeleton leaves is the, the um, shimmer that you get. It's amazing. I wish you could see it on this video. It's very difficult to see on the video. But let me show you what we did with the, the leaves can see it there. So those are the leaves and here's what it looked like before. Okay, if you guys can see that. And um, so when you put it on your layout, okay, very pretty. I love it. Mm -hmm.